In this video, I'm going to create the names database that I'm going to be using for the rest of this lesson. And at the top of the Lecture 9 videos, there's a link to names.zip. So I'm just going to download that. Okay, now I'm going to go to the Downloads folder, and I have names.zip. I'm going to right-click, Extract All, to Downloads. Important that you know where this went because you're going to need to refer to it later. So I have names.sql, which is about 55 megabytes. And that's obviously going to be too big to import through phpMyAdmin. And uh, there's one other setting I want to show you about. So I'm going to go to my Start menu, and under XAMPP, I'm going to right-click on XAMPP Control Panel and run it as Administrator. And then I'm going to go ahead and stop my SQL. And under config, you should see a link to my INI, my.ini. And if you're not sure where this is, on Windows, it's under C, XAMPP, MySQL, bin, right there. So that's where it is on Windows. It's probably somewhere different on Mac. And I'm going to leave most of these settings the same, but towards the bottom, you're going to see some settings for InnoDB. And InnoDB is the database engine that MySQL uses. And one setting in particular is pretty important here. So this InnoDB buffer pool size, that's how much RAM the database will use to cache. And the smaller this is, the more often the database has to go out to disk to read and write things. And on a modern system, 16 megabytes is just ridiculously small. Um, I'm going to set this up. I'm going to go ahead and comment it out. And I'm going to set this line, copy it, and paste. And on my computer, I'm going to set it all the way up to 3G, 3 gigabytes. Um, because I have 32 gigabytes. If you have um, 4 gigabytes, then maybe use 1 gigabyte or 2 gigabytes. If you only have a couple of gigabytes, maybe use um, 500 megabytes. If you have 1 gigabyte, maybe 256 megabytes. But um, anything bigger than 16 megabytes is going to be a big win here. And then I'm also going to copy this InnoDB log file size, comment that one out. And I'm going to set this to about a quarter of this, so one gig here. Then I'm going to save the file, Control S to save. Go back to XAMPP Control and hit Start. So basically, this is going to be big enough that the entire database can fit in memory. And once it gets loaded, it will never actually have to go out to disk at all, which makes it significantly faster. So it's not showing the port here, but I think it's actually working. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the SQL file directly into MySQL using the command line. So I'm going to start by opening a shell. And if you're on the Mac, you can open a terminal window if that button isn't there. And if everything's configured correctly and you type MySQL dash dash help, you should get a bunch of help messages coming back. That means it found MySQL. If it didn't, you might want to change your path, or you can give the full path, which is c colon backslash XAMPP backslash MySQL backslash bin backslash MySQL. And once again, I'm not exactly sure where this is on the Mac, but if you can't find it, let me know and I'll help you. So dash dash help. And that works as well. So here's the command you want to use to get into MySQL. MySQL-u root-p for password. And then when you hit return, it'll ask you to enter your password. Hopefully you remember what you used for the root password. And this is what you should see. So now to import that SQL file, I'm going to say source and then c colon slash users mark 
downloads, and then I named it names.sql and hit return. And this means it's working. So it will take a, a, a few minutes to slog through, but nowhere near as bad as if you hadn't increased the amount of RAM that MySQL is using. Okay, that took about three or four minutes, so not too bad, but not great. And I'm going to type quit and hit return to get out of here. So what that did for me is if I go to localhost and click on PHP my admin, and what I have here is a names database and it has three tables. There's names, which is a list of all of the names from the Social Security Administration CSV files that we were looking at in week four. And I've taken everything from 1915 through 2014. I dropped the early years because there weren't enough names registered. And then there's name counts which is the main table, and it has the rank for each name, how many times that name appeared, and then the actual name itself along with the metaphone is in the names table. So this is a foreign key that matches the primary key in the names table. And then the year and gender and total population um, for that year and gender is registered in year gender totals. And this is a foreign key for the record here in that table. So if this is confusing to you because you haven't taken a database course yet, don't worry about it. Um, what I've done is basically normalize this into three separate tables. Here's the last one. So it has the year, the gender, and the total number of people of this gender that were registered in that year. So what this lets me do is run a select statement on the table using a join. And so we'll do a quick example of that. I'm going to go ahead and go to the SQL tab. And I'm going to select everything from names. And it automatically lowercases these. There's just no way to make an uppercase table name here. So in 275, the convention is to write table names in all uppercase, but I'm just going to ignore that. So from names, and then I'm going to join with the uh, name counts on name ID equal FK name ID. So the primary key and the name table matches the foreign key. I'm sorry, I got it backwards. No, no, that's right. In the name counts field, the table. And then I'm going to join that with year gender totals on year gender total ID equal FK year gender total ID. Make this a little bigger. And then I'm going to select, let's just do where name is equal to mark. And then I'm going to order by year descending. So descending order by year. And let me go ahead and add and gender is male. So this is basically stitching all three of these tables together finding all of the records where the name is Mark and the gender is male, and then displaying them in descending order by year. And so here's what we get. A hundred rows coming back. Took way less than one second to do that query. And we have the name ID, name, metaphone, then the ID from the name counts table, which we don't really need, rank, name count, how many times that name appeared. We don't need this anymore. We don't need this anymore. And then here's the 
your gender total ID, which we don't need, primary key for there, the year, the gender, and the total. So this gives us all the information we need. If we just want to restrict it to the useful fields, let's go ahead and select name, metaphone, rank, name count, and then we need year, gender, total, year, gender, total, and then I'll also return 100 times name count divided by total as percentage. So let's go ahead and execute that, and we'll show all. So here's the data we'll actually be using in a query. So I need to do one more thing. I want to create a new user who just has access to read the information out of this database. So I'm going to go back to server, users, I'm going to add a user, and the name will be names, password will be names, retype names, and then I'm not going to give that user any permission on anything yet, so we'll hit go. And then I'm going to grant special privileges to the database, names database, go. And the only privileges I'm going to give this names user is the ability to run select statements. So they can't modify the data, they can't modify the structure, they can't administer. The only thing they can do is run queries on this database so that even if anybody gets access to the names database, they can't do anything harmful with it. And then I'm going to click Go, and now I have a user who can read information from the names database.